state because he celebrates principled and fair conduct, skillful actions, good deeds, harmlessness, and compassion for living creatures. Then I celebrate the one called a renunciate, who celebrates principled and fair conduct, skillful actions, good deeds, harmlessness, and compassion for living creatures. Well then, drive the chariot up to that renunciate. Yes, your majesty, replied the charioteer, and did so. Then Prince Vipassi said to that renunciate, My good man, what have you done? For your head and your clothes are unlike those of other men. Sire, I am what is called a renunciate. But why are you called a renunciate? I am called a renunciate because I celebrate principled and fair conduct, skillful actions, good deeds, harmlessness, and compassion for living creatures. Then I celebrate the one called a renunciate, who celebrates principled and fair conduct, skillful actions, good deeds, harmlessness, and compassion for living creatures. 9. The going forth then the prince addressed the charioteer, Well then, my dear charioteer, take the chariot and return to the royal compound. I shall shave off my hair and beard right here, dress in ochre robes, and go forth from the lay life to homelessness. Yes, your majesty, replied the charioteer and did so. Then Prince Vipassi shaved off his hair and beard, dressed in ochre robes, and went forth from the lay life to homelessness. Ten a great crowd goes forth a large crowd of eighty-four thousand people in the capital of Bandhumati heard that Vipassi had gone forth. It occurred to them, this must be no ordinary teaching and training, no ordinary going forth in which Prince Vipassi has gone forth. If even the Prince goes forth, why don't we do the same? Then that great crowd of 84,000 people shaved off their hair and beard, dressed in ochre robes, and followed the one intent on awakening, Vipassi, by going forth from the lay life to homelessness. Escorted by that assembly, Vipassi wandered on tour among the villages, towns, and capital cities. Then as he was in private retreat this thought came to his mind, it's not appropriate for me to live in a crowd. Why don't I live alone, withdrawn? from the group. After some time he withdrew from the group to live alone. The 84,000 went one way, but Vipassi went another. 11 Vipassi's reflections then as Vipassi, the one intent on awakening, was in private retreat this thought came to his mind, alas, this world has fallen into trouble. It's born, grows old, dies, passes away, and is reborn. Yet it doesn't understand how to escape from this suffering, from old age and death. Oh, when will an escape be found from this suffering, from old age and death? Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their old age and death? What is a condition for old age and death? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when rebirth exists there's old age and death. Rebirth is a condition for old age and death. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their rebirth. What is a condition for rebirth? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when continued existence exists there's rebirth. Continued existence is a condition for rebirth. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their continued existence. What is a condition for continued existence? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when grasping exists there's continued existence. Grasping is a condition for continued existence. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their grasping? What is a condition for grasping? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when craving exists there's grasping. Craving is a condition for grasping. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their craving. What is a condition for craving? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when feeling exists there's craving. Feeling is a condition for craving. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their feeling. What is a condition for feeling? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when contact exists there's feeling. 
contact is a condition for feeling. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their contact. What is a condition for contact? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when the six sense fields exist there's contact. The six sense fields are a condition for contact. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists are there the six sense fields. What is a condition for? The six sense fields. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when name and form exist there are the six sense fields. Name and form are a condition for the six sense fields. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists are their name and form. What is a condition for name and form? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when consciousness exists there are name and form. Consciousness is a condition for name and form. Then Vipassi thought, when what exists is their consciousness. What is a condition for consciousness? Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when name and form exist there's consciousness. Name and form are a condition for consciousness. Then Vipassi thought, this consciousness turns back from name and form, and doesn't go beyond that. It is to this extent that one may be reborn, grow old, die, pass away, or reappear. That is, name and form are conditions for consciousness. Consciousness is a condition for Name and form Name and form are conditions for the six sense fields. The six sense fields are conditions for contact. Contact is a condition for feeling. Feeling is a condition for craving. Craving is a condition for grasping. Grasping is a condition for continued existence. Continued existence is a condition for rebirth. Rebirth is a condition for old age and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, and distress to come to be. That is how this entire mass of suffering originates. Origination, origination. Such was the vision, knowledge, wisdom, realization, and light that arose in Vipassi, the one intent on awakening, regarding teachings not learned before from another. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no old age and death. When what ceases do old age and death cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when rebirth doesn't exist there's no old age and death. When rebirth ceases, old age and death cease. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no rebirth. When what ceases does rebirth cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when continued existence doesn't exist there's no rebirth. When continued existence ceases, rebirth ceases. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no continued existence. When what ceases does continued existence cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when grasping doesn't exist there's no continued existence. When grasping ceases, continued existence ceases. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no grasping. When what ceases does grasping cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when craving doesn't exist there's no grasping. When craving ceases, grasping ceases. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no craving. When what ceases does craving cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when feeling doesn't exist there's no craving. When feeling ceases, craving ceases. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no feeling. When what ceases does feeling cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when contact doesn't exist there's no feeling. When contact ceases, feeling ceases. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no contact. When what ceases does. Contact cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when the six sense fields don't exist there's no contact. When the six sense fields cease, contact ceases. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist are there no six sense fields. When what ceases do the six sense fields cease. Then, 
through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when name and form don't exist there are no six sense fields. When name and form cease, the six sense fields cease. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist are there no name and form. When what ceases do name and form cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when consciousness doesn't exist there are no name and form. When consciousness ceases, name and form cease. Then Vipassi thought, when what doesn't exist is there no consciousness. When what ceases does consciousness cease. Then, through proper attention, Vipassi comprehended with wisdom, when name and form don't exist there's no consciousness. When name and form cease, consciousness ceases. Then Vipassi thought, I have discovered the path to awakening. That is, when name and form cease, consciousness ceases. When consciousness ceases, name and form cease. When name and form cease, the six sense fields cease. When the six sense fields cease, contact ceases. When contact ceases, feeling ceases. When feeling ceases, craving ceases. When craving ceases, grasping ceases. When grasping ceases, continued existence ceases. When continued existence ceases, rebirth ceases. When rebirth ceases, old age and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, and distress cease. That is how this entire mass of suffering ceases. Cessation, cessation. Such was the vision, knowledge, wisdom, realization, and light that arose in Vipassi, the one intent on awakening, regarding teachings not learned before from another. Some time later Vipassi meditated observing. Rise and fall in the five grasping aggregates. Such is form, such is the origin of form, such is the ending of form. Such is feeling, such is the origin of feeling, such is the ending of feeling. Such is perception, such is the origin of perception, such is the ending of perception. Such are choices, such is the origin of choices, such is the ending of choices. Such is consciousness, such is the origin of consciousness, such is the ending of consciousness. Meditating like this his mind was soon freed from defilements by not grasping. 12. The Appeal of Brahma Then the Blessed One Vipassi, the Perfected One the fully awakened Buddha, thought, why don't I teach the Dhamma? Then he thought, this principle I have discovered is deep, hard to see, hard to understand, peaceful, sublime, beyond the scope of reason, subtle, comprehensible to the astute. But people like attachment, they love it and enjoy it. It's hard for them to see this thing, that is, specific conditionality, dependent origination. It's also hard for them to see this thing, that is, the stilling of all activities, the letting go of all attachments, the ending of craving, fading away, cessation, extinguishment. And if I were to teach the Dhamma, others might not understand me, which would be wearying and troublesome for me. And then these verses, which were neither supernaturally inspired, nor learned before in the past, occurred to him. I've struggled hard to realize this. Enough with trying to explain it. This teaching is not easily understood. By those mired in greed and hate. Those caught up in greed can't see. What's subtle, going against the stream. Deep, hard to see, and very fine. For they're shrouded in a mass of darkness. So, as the Buddha Vipassi reflected like this. His mind inclined to remaining passive not to teaching the Dhamma. Then a certain great Brahma, knowing what the Buddha Vipassi was thinking, thought, Oh my goodness! The world will be lost, the world will perish. For the mind of the realized one Vipassi, the perfected one, the fully awakened Buddha, inclines to remaining passive, not to teaching the Dhamma. Then, as easily as a strong person would extend or contract their arm, he vanished from the Brahma realm and reappeared in front of the Buddha Vipassi. He arranged his robe over one shoulder, knelt on his right knee, raised his joined palms toward the Buddha Vipassi, and said, Sir, let the Blessed One teach the Dhamma. 
Let the Holy One teach the Dhamma. There are beings with little dust in their eyes. They're in decline because they haven't heard the teaching. There will be those who understand the teaching. When he said this, the Buddha Vipassi said to him, I too thought this, Brahma, why don't I teach the Dhamma? Then it occurred to me, if I were to teach the Dhamma, others might not understand me, which would be wearying and troublesome for me. So, as I reflected like this, my mind inclined to remaining passive, not to teaching the Dhamma. For a second time, and a third time that great Brahma begged the Buddha to teach. Then, understanding Brahma's invitation, the Buddha Vipassi surveyed the world with the eye of a Buddha, because of his compassion for sentient beings. And he saw sentient beings with little dust in their eyes, and some with much dust in their eyes, with keen faculties and with weak faculties, with good qualities and with bad qualities, easy to teach and hard to teach. And some of them lived seeing the danger in the fall to do with the next world, while others did not. It's like a pool with blue water lilies, or pink or white lotuses. Some of them sprout and grow in the water without rising above it, thriving underwater. Some of them sprout and grow in the water reaching the water's surface. And some of them sprout and grow in the water but rise up above the water and stand with no water clinging to them. In the same way, the Buddha Vipassi saw sentient beings with little dust in their eyes, and some with much dust in their eyes. Then that great Brahma, knowing what the Buddha Vipassi was thinking, addressed him in verse. Standing high on a rocky mountain. You can see the people all around. In just the same way, all seer, wise one. Ascend the palace built of Dhamma. You're free of sorrow, but look at these people. Overwhelmed with sorrow, oppressed by rebirth. And old age, 